uh, just grow together. We can uh, change the world together. What uh, what an excitement. Who would want a better life than this? Um, for me, it's amazing. It's amazing. We can connect with our um, international family. One thing I love about what COVID did was it reset our minds as well, that we could do this stuff online. Um, we were. I remember the time that Papa Luke and I would travel around the nations and we would not be able to do anything till we got to the place. And then we'd have to like almost start from scratch. Um, having Zoom and having been able to disciple people from distance, even in Australia, and then just getting to a place and finding it's already ready for the next stage has been phenomenal. Can we just thank um, Jane and the worship team and the prophetic worship just for being able to uh, give us an opportunity to uh, to just love on one another and to allow God to love on us and us to love our dad and, and to love our husband, Jesus, and to love Holy Spirit. Uh, can we just um, write some messages in chat group and just thank Jano because she um, just net hits the nail on the head every single time. What a blessing. Guys, I'm just excited about today's teaching. It's such a great, it's been such a great few weeks uh, on this. We we are still continuing on the circle of Christ-centered wheel of life. Um, and we've gone halfway and we've stopped at wealth creation and we're pondering on that because there's a grace over it. Like how many of you want to see f- like permanent breakthroughs in your life, in the finances, and when I say permanent, it's not just another breakthrough and then you've got to come back and do another breakthrough and another break. I'm talking about permanent breakthroughs that you want to see in this season, that is the rest of this year, into the next early next year, that over the next 12 months, permanent breakthroughs, you've got strategies in place. Because I can tell you that Papa, Pops Matthew and I are, you know, we can we can testify the fruit that we have and Papa Luke and Pastor Rubika are right there on our on our skirt tails behind us in getting this done. And, and we know this stuff works. Like who else is interested in seeing this happen? Because there's such a grace over the ability to, to see finances no longer be a distraction. And imagine what we can do for the world and what we're able to do in our God-given purposes when money is not an issue. Um, and, and we learn to create wealth and not just riches. So I'm going to ask you the question again. Who's keen to do see the breakthroughs this uh, as Pastor Rubika said, you know, uh, we're in the go- in God's business today, and we're here for business. We're here to just say, "Yep, that's this is what I'm going to be doing." And if it's if you're keen to see the breakthroughs this season, then continue to stick here with us. Um, uh, it's exciting. I'm really loving what God is doing. I love the prophetic style in which we teach. It allows us to just move according to where heavenly heaven wants us to 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 move as well. So as I said earlier this year, we we had uh, our conference. We're looking forward to having our next one in January of uh, next year. Not if, not long to go. Establishing kingdom cities for our king was the theme that prophetically that God spoke about. And so the wealth side of things is like I was, I was looking at that and saying, how do we take the wealth of the garden into our homes, community cities, and places of influence? Because as Pops has often said, when God created uh, man. And the earth, he created all the resources that man required in the earth. And I believe he put a lot of that in the garden and then it began to expand and grow. And if we can understand the principles that he placed in the garden, then we begin to take that out into our cities. We don't have to go back to the garden. We take what's in the garden and start to live it out in our environments. Amen. And so we want to learn a bit more about how that works and we're going to keep uh, digging into today's got there's a few, few few questions up so I want you to make sure you have writing elements and ready to type in answers as well today we're looking at the seventh way to increase wealth and sustenance can you make money make money whilst you are sleeping how many of you think you can do that anyone here think i i want to i want to make money and i can make money whilst i'm sleeping and i can cause money to make money awesome now, how many of you are already seeing this take place? And if, if it's a yes, you're seeing this take place. And I want you to put the number 777, uh, which means that I'm already seeing money make money. I'm already seeing that in my life. I'm happy. It's happening. Maybe not at the level, full level I want it to be, but it's happening. Awesome. Guys, I want you to start uh, taking note of these people who are doing this and start asking questions. One thing with our family is that we don't hide anything. 
when I was looking over 30 years ago on how to understand how to create wealth, I, it was so hard to find um, find people who were making money that uh, made money or create wealth. And, and when I did find people, they didn't want to share. And I just love the fact that we have a family that's willing to share everything. Amen. Um, so, so you take note of people who are already doing this, where money is making money whilst you sleep. Like I call it, your, your money needs to have children. Your coins need to beget children. Everything needs to multiply according to itself, according to Genesis. So if cows multiply according to their selves and people multiply according to their selves and plants multiply according to itself, then um, money should multiply according to itself, right? Without you having the human effort of being a slave to it. So um, maybe this is stuff you haven't heard about before. Maybe it is, but let me tell you, we can't keep it as simple as possible, but yet it's new stuff that we should have learned in school. No one's taught us this stuff. Um, if you were peeking into our, uh, when we were just prepping today for the meeting with our leadership, you would have heard us say that it's so exciting. Like my next generation, my generation of children, the ones who want to listen to me and follow some of the stuff I'm doing, my challenge to them is get rid of the money distractions before you even get to university. What if you could, by the time you've gotten to university, already had an income stream coming in without your efforts? And it's now no longer based on your career or your business or anything else. Imagine the type of careers we could have with so much passion, regardless of money. Imagine the businesses we could create to touch others, like Pops was sharing about um, him, he, the, the new the new business that he's moving towards to brand it and expand it. Like the stuff you could do is amazing if you get rid of the money distractions before you even get to uni, before you even get to university or college or a higher degree, or before you finish school. And this stuff is should be taught, but it's not. So here we are teaching it here so you can multiply it to your generations. Do you all remember the story of the Good Samaritan? Why do we want money to make money? <clears throat> and Pop shared this with us. Compassion minus capacity leads to frustration. Capacity minus compassion leads to self-serving. Compassion plus capacity leads to kingdom living. Um, and I love what Margaret Thatcher said. No one would remember the Good Samaritan if he'd only had good intentions. He had what? Money as well. Amen. So, Here's what I want you to imagine for a moment and tell me if you are excited about this. Imagine your hard-earned money being able to multiply itself without your efforts. This is one of the best-kept secrets of the wealthy that is open to those who are ready to learn and put into practice. Imagine the ability to free up your time and money even more to be like the Good Samaritan that was ready and available to be a kingdom ambassador. Who is interested in this? Who is interested in this? Like if, if this is you, then you're in the right place because it's time for us to, to get out and break free from the issues that the enemy has, uh, has stopped us. The thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come to bring life and life in fullness. And doesn't matter what nation you're in, it uh, doesn't matter where you come from. And I love the first two who jumped in are from Malaysia and from Kenya saying, yes, me, I am. Um, you know, so here comes Singapore and Australia. Ooh, who else is interested in this and saying, I can imagine this and I can imagine a life that begins to move. Now, I don't know how it's going to happen yet. And don't worry about the how. But before we get to the how, we need to start with the why. Why do I want to do this? And remember, I said the difference between being rich and being wealthy is riches are based around self-centeredness and selfishness. Being wealthy is about the generosity. We have a wealthy God. He is so rich in mercy, which means that word is that wealth, that giving. And when you're wealthy, you give, uh, but you can't give what you don't have. So that's why we've got to grow in the finances as well. What an amazing thing. Uganda's in and, and Myanmar's in and uh, Kenya's in again and Sri Lanka's in. Awesome. So excited for this. Uh, when we can be ambassadors that are free, because sometimes what's stopping us is the opportunities of recognizing that we can actually make money, make money. So can you make money, make money whilst you're sleeping? I want to talk about, I want to talk about this, introduce a little bit further, this topic on passive income. Passive income frees up your time, money, and other resources to enable you to live out your God-given purpose. Remember the seven 
royal rights and responsibilities that I shared about um, a few sessions ago. Number seven is to be time. It is your God-given right and responsibility to be time-free, resource, and available to fulfill the Great Commission. Amen. So it doesn't mean you have to travel nations. Not everyone has a passion for that or desire for that. Um, it just means that you have the ability to do whatever God has called you to, which is your passions, the stuff around what God has put in your heart, and you are free to do it. You're time-free and resourced. Because most people say, when I have retired or when I am free or when I have more money, then I'll do this, this, and this for God. And yet that is the complete opposite. That's where the enemy comes and makes us slaves to where money is the issue rather than us saying, I'm going to go for what God has called me to do because I, I am learning strategies on how to create a passive style income. Amen. So in my book, Better Than the Tides, and, and thank you for those who have uh, made some orders on these, they, they'll be sent to you. Uh, those who uh, the last two weeks did requests for uh, for the, the books and wanted more information, I'm sorry we didn't capture your names and details. Could you please WhatsApp me? Or if you do put in the group and say you want to know more about buying these books, um, The Better Than the Tides and Creating cap, uh, creating uh, Business with No Capital, please uh, WhatsApp me. Or if you put in the chat group, uh, can, can you just give me an indication that you could take the details down and we'll uh, follow up with you? So, Ken, if, that, if you can hear me, just go yes. All right. Awesome, Ken. Thank you. Wonderful. So guys, in the book, I talk about this idea that God gave me from Genesis 26, 1, 12, and 13, that um, uh, the, the, uh, the Isaac began to prosper, continue to prosper, and is very prosperous. And the idea of this broke to break through to flow to overflow, I want to focus on the flow and overflow because by the time you get past the breakthrough, it's a permanent one and there's no going backwards. And, and, and the idea of flow is that you have enough financial flow without personal input. That's moving towards passive income. There are a lot of high income earners around, but I'm saying, can you, can you continue to live without your input? And that is really important for you to be aware of. And so when you move to overflow, it's like being able to even give away money. But the money you're giving away and living off is without your input. And so if you can see this kind of trend down of the blue and the and the increase of the green is that when we start living in today's world, unfortunately, we start living with from more active income and less passive income. What we want to teach you is how to do this without waiting till you retire. Because most people wait till they're about 65 or older to do this. Now, I've been able to achieve this from 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 the last few years in my 40s 30s getting into 40s and the more i grow in this the more exciting it becomes ken i hope you're taking tash and mustafa's name down because we'll then organize these books uh, and to let you guys know how you can get a copy of them awesome um so guys how many of you get this and i want to just open this up for for about two three minutes to pops matthew because he's the only other one here and these are the fruits. Like uh, there's a, there's a few of our implementers and our leadership getting into this kind of uh, moving away from the blue and moving more to the green. But uh, pops, I guess you and I are, are down here in this area, moving more and more in this. You you're more advanced than me. Um, you've got heaps of experience on this. Do you want to weigh in on why money making money and moving to act passive income is so important in kingdom fulfillment? Thanks, Ruben. <clears throat> Appreciate that. Yep. I think uh, look. Uh, this is something, it's not rocket science, it's something that's been proven over the centuries. Uh, and uh, the key thing is, this is also kingdom, it's a kingdom principle. Uh, just like if he's talked about the Good Samaritan, the Good Samaritan, even though he was going about his business, he was traveling from Jer uh, Jericho to Jer passing, bypassing Jericho to Jerusalem. That was obviously his normal route to do business. Uh, but he was at peace in everything because there was no strife, no stress, no worries in him about finances because he was uh, already in that flow and overflow mode. So likewise, for example, for us, I think, uh, as you touched earlier, if the ch our children can, even before they go to uni, if they're already in a certain flow position, right, that gives them the, so much of peace and independence that... Uh, that is, uh, they can even excel in what they're doing and they can pursue what they want to do without having to worry about uh, their future. 
because they're already getting into a place of flow where the next step is really to go into an overflow. So the, the I ultimately it's got to be in the overflow. That's where you really see, as you talked about being rich and wealthy. If you really want to be wealthy, then you got to be in the overflow, because that's where uh, money distraction is long. It's not an, it's, it's not there anymore, and the money is making money for you, and you can pursue whatever God's put in your heart. Whether it can be acquiring businesses, or you want to do ministry, travel around the world or you want to just have a luxury holiday, whatever you, you, your desires are, is fulfilled. And you're not worried that you're spending the money and then you've got to make it up because that whatever money you're spending, that that money has already been, you know, it's already been double, triple uh, before you even spend that money, right? So that's the whole idea. When you talk about overflow, uh, that you are in such a position where it is not a distraction anymore. Money is not a distraction, right? And you, you can now pursue exactly what your passion is, what God put in your heart. With, even then, there is no limitation. You're not going to say, oh, I, if I go there, I can, I can only afford to spend about 20000 or 30000 No, you go there, you spend what you need to spend. Uh, recently, we went to Kenya and Uganda and for two months. Right? And you can see that you know, there was no barrier to what we need to use money. We never worried about the money. We never say, okay, even I know we set a budget, but I think we doubled the budget, explained a double, you know, the cost exploded double, but there was no issue, right? Why? Because of our purpose was being fulfilled. A purpose was being fulfilled. There was joy in what we were doing. And money was not a distraction. So whatever it costs us extra money, that's not an issue. Fine. We will we'll, we'll just spend it because it's necessary without having to worry about where, how we're we going to replace that money. Because we knew by the time we got home, that money is tripled or double quadrupled anyway. So, and that's the kind of situation we need to be in. Because actually then what it means really uh, is that you are not hoarding for yourself. The crux is not hoarding. You, you're releasing that where God wants you to release without having to worry about where, how it's going to be replaced or replenished. Because you know the moment you release, it is money, it is already doubling, quadrupling in, in, in some way or another. Uh, and that's what it's all about. So this is why, you know, God says, when you go and do about my business, you're going to my father's business, I take care of all your provisions. I take care of your provisions. And in God's kingdom, it's about multiplication, it's not addition. You're not just adding another 10% to your to your wealth or 15% is actually multiplication. It's about 30, 60, 100 for multiplication. So that's what it's uh, it's about. So once you understand this principle and you work towards that, and when you get to that point, I think, you know, whatever we can explain to you, but it's nothing like being in that position and seeing the goodness of God operating in that environment. So that's probably how I hope that helps and encourages everyone. Awesome. Can we just give Pops a big uh, clap and a thank you? And Pops, just maybe you want to answer this question that Stephen and Perry put in, which is a good question. Do we have to have to go through rich to wealthy or direct, which is more beautiful? <laughs> Look, I think it's a journey. It's about stewardship. So you've got to go through that journey because you learn. You learn and you get wisdom out of it. The only time you're going to go from, you know, Bypassing rich is when you win, if you win a lottery ticket, right? So it is a journey. So you learn how to steward yeah, every time and how to multiply what you have so that you can then go into a, a, a exponential growth. So you have to go through the process because without learning through the journey and getting wisdom and experience out of it, you will not appreciate it. Amen. So true. Thank you, Pops. That's a... Whew, what a blessing. Um, I remember the story, uh, and I won't get the numbers fully right, but it's 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 the right principle of a father who had um, on his dying bed, very wealthy man, two sons, and gave them options. Would you like um, a, a, a million dollars? And at that time, a million was like today's billion. Uh, am I talking about US dollars here? Um, or would you like uh, a dollar that will double every single day for the rest of your life? And and the rich-minded son said, I want the million dollars. Give it to me. 
I was actually it was probably about ten million dollars, but it was a fair substantial amount in today's terms. Um, the the wealthy minded son calculated that a dollar a day, uh, I think it was within two years, he would outgrow the $10 million that his uh, br brother had taken and, and he would keep on growing. Like, like imagine at day 60, you've got 10 million. Day 61, you've got now 20 million. Day 62, you've got now 40 million and so on and so forth. So uh, as Pop said very, very, very uh, rightly, it's a journey. Um, are we willing to take it? Like you guys are on the last five weeks, jumping on every week on this particular aspect of the Christ-centered wheel of life. That means you are taking it seriously. Amen. And I, and I, as Pastor Rubika said, there's so many testimonies that are coming through this that I'm excited. And we're saying, let's keep on running this so we find this, the, get these testimonies, get these, get you working, living a practical life because you can either depend on us or you can allow us to help you become in, independent and God dependent as we say and 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 then get to a place where you become interdependent interdependent which is so beautiful so how can I make money make money passively and uh, we've been talking about that's the seventh way of investments now I'm going to just go through this in just a little detail to throw something at you we'll do into more detail next week so don't stress about this because for some of you, this is already a bit overwhelming. I can just sense in my spirit. It's like, whoa, I mean, how do we even, I can't even get a job or I can't even get active income for long periods of time or a high amount of income. You want me to get into passive income. But I tell you what, just stick with this and start to imagine and you'll be amazed at what happens. Um, so I'm just excited for you guys on what God can do. Some of the ways of uh, in, in, in growing money passively is through what we call investments and the different styles of investments. There's cash and cash e equivalents. There's low risk investments. There's moderate risk investments and there's speculative investments. And we, I'm going to share a little bit more about this next week. You're welcome to take a screenshot on this. And then we're going to introduce you next week um, to some plans that you can jump into no matter what country or you know, how much you're earning. And that's exciting for me because never before have I seen anyone, uh, any one organization be able to say, hey, let's take some of the uh, hard-earned money you've got and give you money with interest and create a platform that can do that. And that's exciting. Um, and so, but we need to get the basics and get the right foundations before we can jump into those. Otherwise, we move into a rich, greedy mentality rather than a wealth generous mentality so who would like to be wealthy and generous not rich and greedy come on put it in your in the chat group you want to be wealthy and generous or you want to be rich and greedy because you can't be uh you can't mix the two and that's why the bible says you can't serve god and mammon you have to serve one and make the other one your slave so do we want to be rich and greedy or do we want to be wealthy and generous and that's important to think through that that language that we change of being wealthy is being generous. And those who've met Pops knows that he's a, the, one of the most generous men you'll ever meet, um, but he stewards well what he's got. He doesn't just throw money out because that's what the rich and greedy do. They just want to uh, prove a point and be high profile. Uh, but the wealthy are low profile, but high impact. Amen. What a blessing. If you want, if you're thinking it's hard to get passive income, just have a look at this slide. I mean, these are just part of 30 ways of making passive income. Um, how exciting is that? You know, there's there's different ways. There's dividends, there's CDs, there's um, bonds, there's index funds, there's uh, silent partnering, there's buying on existing uh, business, buying an existing business, there's small business uh, bonds. There's real estate renting, there's vehicle ad space, there's car renting, there's buying uh, domains, there's ebooks, audiobooks, like all of this stuff will make passive income for you. And, and, and don't stress about, oh, I didn't know I was going to learn about all of this stuff. No, I mean, we, the, the, the wealthy get wealthy in just a couple of strategies, and then they start to create more wealth by putting other strategies in place. Amen. And so I'm just showing you some ideas. I'm throwing some ideas to you to think, to realize that career and working for a living aren't the only way. There is so many ways that we can grow our wealth. What would it look like if you are able to create a family structure that learns to be not privileged children, 
but you have a, a privileged family that's privileged in the kingdom work. Like, let's change this value system of saying to people you're privileged. Well, what if you're privileged to run in kingdom because you have financial freedom to be able to do that and you're teaching your children the same and teaching your generations and you yourself are breaking free from this. Like, I'm excited about Kenya. The young adults there are off the charts. They are hearing about their identity and they are grabbing a hold of it. Now, imagine the next 10 years, these young adults from their 20s and 30s to their 30s and 40s, and they're already financially set. Myanmar, I'm just look, listening to what Mercy just shared with us before about how favor during the last five weeks of hearing this stuff, she's changing her mind, changing the way she says things. And there is breakthroughs in a nation that is, is broken. It's literally broken. It is the worst uh, situation to live in a place like Myanmar. But yet it is the best place that God has placed Mercy in to see amazing things taking place. And uh, I'm excited for that. So here's some steps to start investing. And we'll talk more about this stuff next week. But I want you to start thinking about this. Take a screenshot of this about if I want to start investing towards passive income, I need to decide on a monthly investment budget. And, and so some of you might say, I don't even have money to do to even think about this. Uh-huh. That's good. So there's ne the next set of slides and the questions today in the breakout rooms are going to help you to get to that point so you can get to this point. You can't get to this point. You can't skip steps if you want to be wealthy. Um, so how many of you would agree with that? You can't skip steps. And even if you don't believe it, start to trust the teacher. Okay. Um, and and uh, we, we're saying to you, this is important. You can't skip steps if you want to be wealthy. Okay. Everyone agree with that? Got one agreement. Hopefully the others are going to say, yes, we agree or we trust you because we don't know if this is right, if this is the way to go or not. And uh, thank you for trusting us. Pops, thank you for the endorsement. That is so important to decide, number one, on a monthly investment budget. Number two, learn about the different types of investments and their risks. Become a student of wealth. It's one of our, our, our seven ways to increase wealth. Number three, set goals and choose the types of investments that fit them. Number four, figure out, out how you'll start investing. And number five, monitor your investments regularly. Now, wouldn't it be interesting if we started our career life knowing this first, before we learned about career and job and working for the rest of our lives? Wouldn't it be awesome if we learned this first? Well, here you go. You've got an opportunity to relearn things and it's never too late. And God is able to catapult us. Um, I, I, I lost everything when I was in my... Uh, in my mid th early 30s and you know I'm going to be 46 next month and uh, woohoo send me some gifts guys thank you uh, <laughs> I'm going to be doing living uh, my birthday gift uh, Pastor Rubika what is what do I always say my birthday gift my desire has been on my birthday everyone wants to give me gifts and and my kids so what do you want for your birthday and stuff but Pastor Rubika knows what I love to preach on his birthday to share kingdom with others Amen. So and and to travel to uh, so many different places and do that. So I've been invited uh, around my birthday period to be in in Portugal. Been praying for Europe, and I got an invitation, and no one knew. And I, whenever God says something, I never tell anyone about it. Um, and no one knew. And I began. I've been speaking over Europe that identity needs to come into Europe. And uh, this brother friend of mine that I've known for years who was living in Bali, suddenly he's in Portugal, didn't know that, invites me and says, would you come do worship there and change atmosphere in Portugal? They need to hear about identity. Wow, what a blessing. So you get to do what you get to want to do if you start to imagine what you want to do and stop looking at the limitations. Stop looking at what's limiting you and start looking at the potential within you. Amen. Someone write that down. Stop looking at what's limiting you and start looking at the potential within you. That's a good saying. So guys, we got some exercises to do now. And I want you to, uh, to, to get ready for this. We were slaves to Egypt and uh, God moved us to become ambassador of heaven. We went from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and we've been offered the tree of life. And I hope this picture kind of details that. And so we've been moved from goal setting into abundant life living. And if you're still goal setting, then you kind of miss this few of the steps of how God wants us to live is to live in abundance, not to live in just our goals. Because goals are self-serving and they have an expiry date. 
And when you get to them, you normally say, okay, well, what's next? Whereas abundant life living is living in a place of perpetual kingdom life. The thief came to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come to bring life and life in abundance. You guys getting this? And so the key to getting from goals to abundant life living, who would like to know them? Because they're just like, like Papa Luke said, this stuff is simple. Like kingdom is simple. It's only intricate because we have such an intricate thinking of trying to get to some place. And as my dad would often say, I don't know if anyone can see me on the screen, but he would say sometimes when I was talking everywhere that, you, you know, you're trying to get your, your, your hand to touch your nose, like around your face, rather than just going directly to the point. So who would like to know, how do I get from goals to abundant living? Now, I'm not against goals. We do set goals. But, but if we live in abundance, that's where... We begin to see this wealth where money creates money. We live off passive income. We start to live the resource that we want to live. Who's interested in this? Because if you are, we're going to do an exercise that's going to shift you, change you, cause you to multiply. Because we've got to start with changing our mind. Once you change our mind, everything else starts to change. So I got uh, I got three me's. I got a few more starting to come in. Everyone's starting to wake up now. This is important. Because we have to get out of goals. I see that see that hand, Shami. Awesome. We have to get out of goal setting because sometimes we set goals and then what? And that's the worst thing because the enemy brings us to a standstill and it's at a cost usually of our, if we're setting financial goals, it's usually at a cost to our family, family time, uh, even our health. And it's a risk. But when you live an abundant life living, amazing stuff happens. So the bridge, guys, thank you for the for the interest to say, yes, let me do this, because this is what has changed me totally. The bridge between goals and abundant life living is dreams and purpose and identity. If you can dream it, you can achieve it. All right. Think about that. Because God imagined, dreaming is our imagination. If I can imagine it, dream it. Um, God imagined this first, said, let us make man in our own image. He imagined that, he spoke it, and then he did it. Amen. And so. Every time you imagine something, you know, he, he said, even before the foundations of the world, Jesus was sent. So they imagined, they knew what was happening, the Trinity, they imagined the solution, and then they achieved it. And so dreams are really important for us to begin to visualize, understand, change our thinking. It's connected to our thinking and our mind. And it doesn't matter what place geographically you're in, this stuff works. And when you understand for a purpose and identity, that changes and transforms you into an abundant life living. It snatches you out of slavery to Egypt, slavery to money. The lack of money or having riches both make you a slave. You either love money or hate money or you lack money makes you a slave. But when you're a son, you are a what? An inheritor, including of finances. Because the inheritance of this earth is to have wealth on this earth that God has given us. Amen. And so here's some questions that I want you to do in order to discover your purpose and help to get rid of the money distractions. Because sometimes we, we don't know what we would do if we had freedom of time and all the money in the world. And so here's a place of bridging us over. Are you guys ready for this? You get 30 seconds to answer each question in point form. Do not think about your answer too long. Just write down whatever comes to your mind. I want to tell you that for five years, I did this every single year as the new year rolled over. And you can do it anytime. And it just helped me learn about my purpose and identity. And uh, one of my coaching business name uh, is called Capture Your Purpose. And I found that if I found my purpose and I lived it, um, I, can st I could start to get rid of the money distractions in my life. Um, so is everyone ready? If you're ready, can you just say yes in the chat group? Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, meaning uh, a why for yes. I'm ready for this uh, because you get 30 seconds, guys. So I'm going to be timing you. <laughs> and uh, when I say stop, be good little students and stop, please. Don't cheat. Um, it's going to be, this is going to be exciting because the reason you get 30 seconds without thinking too much about it is because it's going to take what's the in your inner self and don't feel your inner self is is uh, demonic think of it the opposite way you are a son you're an inheritor and it's going to pull out what heaven has within you as you answer these questions now some of you have seen these questions before from years ago when you were doing coaching with me 
I want you to still answer it. As I say, I always answer these questions. They're amazing. They're beautiful. All right. You guys ready? Here we go. First question. Now, don't think about it. Write down in point form, um, whatever comes out. Okay. If I had 10 million USD today, $10 million to spend, what would I do with it? Be as specific as possible. So if you don't know how to convert your currency, it's a lot of money. Okay. If you're in another country, not sure about it, 10 million US dollars. Go. 30 seconds. Twenty seconds to go. Awesome, stop. Wonderful, guys. Okay. Next question, as many answers as you can write down. If I had six months to live, regardless of my financial and relationship status, what would I do? Six months to live, no money, doesn't matter whether you had money or not, whether you had good relationships or not, six months to live, what would you do? Go, 30 seconds. Five seconds to go. Awesome, stop. Well done, guys. You can always go back to these exercises later and think about it. La next question, we've got five questions here. If I had an inheritance that was conditional upon receiving 100,000 USD a month for the rest of my life on the condition that I spent all of the money each month, so you have to spend 100,000 USD each month in order to receive the next 100,000. It was an inheritance for the rest of your life. This could include savings, charity, investments, et cetera. What would you do? Ready? Go. You had an inheritance that was conditional upon spending 100,000 USD a month for the rest of your life. Ten seconds to go. So I just when you say give it for the kingdom, more specific. I love these answers coming in. All right, stop. Um, charity and family, more specific. So this is where I want you guys to get as specific as you can, which is why we're repeating questions from a different angle. Um, that's good, Mom Carol. I will invest, save, build people, and save life by helping and giving again i'd say bring break down the numbers hundred thousand usd a month how much is going to each of these am i going to save ten thousand and give a and and give twenty thousand to build people every month and and take another then what am i going to do with the rest of the seventy thousand so i you got to get more specific about this i'm going to give you guys another 30 seconds to write down this same question more clear answers how would i break down the hundred thousand usd a month and what would i do with it go 30 seconds Let's go. Invest, what are you going to invest? Like how much are you going to invest every month? Charity and family, what does that look like? More specific details. Invest in passive income, how much? Invest, like what are we going to invest? 100,000 every month. Break down what you would do. Good, Samuel. 50K for invest in passive income. Good. What are you going to do with the other 50K? Right, stop, 30 seconds. Now you guys, I'm gonna give you time to answer this. 30% saving, live on 20, 50% ministry. Good, Stephen. See, this is what I want you guys to start thinking of. So 30,000, I'm gonna save, 20,000, I'm gonna live off, 50,000 a month, I'm gonna um, do ministry with. Good, so more specifically, what does that ministry look like? Excellent, Shami, 50% investment, 25K to give others. 
so every month, are you going to just give 25K to the same people, different people? Um, how would you decide if those people are worth giving it to or not? So those are questions I want you guys to think about. Um, so it's good, as needed, more specific, more specific. This is how we get to purpose and identity is the more we can dream about it because most of the time we say we want to be generous but we don't know how that generosity is going to look like i think i like what mom carol said before about helping the motherless um that is awesome was that what you said mom carol um i read here something uh, i love Stephen. you know help schooling my my sisters and helping a few needy so again more specific how much uh, real estate and schools uh coach ronald said pastor ronald buy a house okay how much do we need to do those things because you might have now say what do i do next with the rest of the money help to uplift the others again how do we do that more specifics okay because these are just high level thinking we want to go into deeper thinking and again if you guys are getting a bit frustrated that's good because when you're frustrated you're ready to learn or when you're confused i should say you're ready to learn when you're frustrated you're ready for a breakthrough so if I'm frustrating, you're ready for a breakthrough. Okay, more specifics, guys. Right, next question. Question four. 30 seconds to answer, guys. If I had all the finance I needed, I was debt-free, in peak health and in right relationships. So no hindrance, basically. What would I do with the rest of my life? Go. Specifically as possible. I would say things like I'm going to travel to three countries in the next three months. These are the three countries I'm going to travel to. I would say I'm going to pay, I'm going to, I'm debt free. So I'm going to pay, uh, start a foundation and, and invest 100K into it and let that grow to a million, uh, which incidentally is what we're doing with Project 61. How exciting. Um, I would say I'm going to seek out maybe uh, amputee children who, who need uh, legs, uh, prosthetics, and I'm going to make sure we do a thousand amputees in a year with prosthetics. Right? S -s go, stop. <laughs> Ajita, awesome. Africa's got 55 nations. Give us a nation <laughs> if you want to go to. Hopefully, you choose Kenya and then Nigeria as well. <laughs> uh, I'll sponsor students, help my families. Love it. See, getting more specific, guys. I want to get more specific in this because the more specific we get, you'll be amazed at what heaven will do because now heaven's saying I'm, you're able to steward things better. Love traveling. Awesome. Stephen, I'm assuming that is you and Perry. That's a blessing. Last question, guys. List five dreams, goals you would like to achieve in your lifetime. 30 seconds. Let's go. Five dreams or goals you'd like to achieve in your lifetime. Love it, Shami. Good. Getting more detailed. Now, what amount would be needed to make Christiana financially sufficient? Think through that. Um, travel combining ministry, Wh which countries would you visit first? And what ministry would you do there? Help people in my country. How would you help them in your country? See people's lives change. Awesome, Ajita. So what does that mean more specifically? How would you change people's lives? Okay, and these are the things I want you to think about. Pay school fees for the needy. Zippy, awesome. So um, would you specifically look for certain types of people like people with disabilities or uh, people who have fam uh, who are orphaned? Um, and help them, or would it be anyone that comes to you and give them school fees? Educate my kids, build school for, for orphans, invest real estate. Good. More specific. Great. In what areas would you be buying your real estate? Is it just in Uganda or other countries, uh, Coach Ronald? Traveling in Uganda, Mustafa, excellent. What areas, wh where would you travel in Uganda that you haven't traveled before? Okay. Whew, what a joy. Who is getting this? Is this making sense? Yep, Ministry Uganda, Dubai, well done. And again, what sort of ministry are we talking about? What are we going to be doing there? Okay, so this helps you to move into purpose, guys. And this is what I want you to think through and understand. Yep, good, Shami. So guys, take a, take a screenshot of these questions. And then now I want you to go back and do these sometime uh, within the next 24 hours. Start to do this within the next 24 hours and do it slowly, not 30 seconds, and think through every single question. And if it takes you an hour, 
man, you are sowing into something powerful for the rest of your life. Who is willing to give this a go where they do this within the next 24 hours and then, you know, write in our group chat and just remind, uh, tell us what, what, uh, that you've done it and you can share what you've done as well. That you go through these questions again and you get really specific. I want to tell you, when I did these questions every year, man, those five years of doing it diligently when I had nothing, I was frustrated, I couldn't see breakthroughs, made such a big difference. So how many of you are going to commit to this? Put a C if you're going to commit into the into the group chat, put a C in and say, I've, I'm committing to in the next 24 hours going through these questions and taking my time through it. Awesome, guys. I love participation. I love that we are a family that's growing together, staying together, changing the world together. What a blessing. What a blessing. So let me just remind you what we've been doing so far. These are the uh, things that we've been talking about. Just a bit of a recap that will help us. And next week, I'll go continue on number seven. Uh, we talked about seven ways to increase your wealth and sustenance. And we, we, we explained the word wealth is an abundance of valuable possessions or money, a, a, a plentiful supply of a particular desirable thing. And I love that. Um, and sustenance is, you know, the maintaining of someone or something in life or existence. It's no use. It's not about just making that million. It's about sustaining the million that continues to multiply and grow. And as Pops Matthew said, you know, we travel like how many people travel here? And when you travel, you take off your savings. And then when you come back, you you have less money that than more. Um, and some of you are probably thinking, I don't even have the money to travel, so don't even ask me that question. But, you know, when Pops and I, when we're traveling, we travel without touching our savings and our money has multiplied by the time we've got back to where we are. Uh, Pops, isn't that true? Like six months away for me, my money has grown more than lessened and it should have lessened than the, if because I was away for six months. But that's... Amina. A, I'll say yeah. Amina. <laughs> <laughs> Amina. Amina, yes. <laughs> Does that happen to you? <laughs> so true. Yeah. And what about for you? How have you found it? Exactly the case. I mean, to me, uh, I'm not, I don't even think about it to be Ruben. I don't even think about <clears throat> how much I need to spend. <clears throat> like uh, Papa Luke asked me, you know, when you want to go to Kenya, Uganda for holiness wedding, he said, Matthew, are you in? Of course, straight away, you know. No issues. And, you know, we had uh, Papa Luke, myself, and Jeremiah. So, plus, we had some people on the ground, right? So, we need to cover all those expenses. <clears throat> it was not, we didn't even know to think about it. I said, I didn't prepare a budget. I'd say, oh, okay, how much is going to cost? It's going to cost. No. I just say, I don't, even when after the travel's over, I didn't even look at the expenses. I just said, nothing to worry. It's already doubled or tripled, you know, so there's nothing to look at. Amen. So, yeah. What a, what, a, what a great way to look at it. And by the way, guys, when Pop says he doesn't look at it, we're still stewarding it well. He throws yeah. it to us so that we, we make sure that we're looking at anything from P61 that we're doing that is, uh, is looked through and stewarded as well. But just that, that attitude of they, we're not stressed. There's no stress in this. And I want you guys to get to that point. Who would love to live a lifestyle like that? Because you're getting rid of the money distractions. You're living purpose, you see. Like we can say we can live purpose and, and on purpose, right? And so I suggested to you guys to write down your family legacy around wealth and sustenance. If you want money to make money, you need to have a vision and a purpose. And hopefully today in just working through your purpose, you start writing down a more clearer legacy. So how many of you have written this down already? Uh, this is about four weeks ago when we did, it, did our teaching on it. And if you haven't, uh, do it. And if you have done it, you can modify it and change it. Um, so I'd say, number one, get this done, okay? Secondly, let's look at the seven ways to increase wealth and sustenance. Number one was what? Faith it till you make it. Don't fake it or fear it. Like, you've got to fake, uh, faith this. Um, and I love what Mercy was saying earlier with us in testimony. That she's faithing it, and she's doing the, 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 the language change, which is awesome. Number two. You want to increase wealth and sustenance, create a truth-based mindset around wealth. 
uh, once again, Mercy was telling us that she, in Myanmar, uh, and this is most people in the world, ministers don't know that they should be able to work and have produce income. They just think full-time ministers means you're full-time poor as well. And you try and scrounge off the, the uh, congregation who are already poor as well, because you, you can't give away what you don't have. You can't. And, and, and if you meet a rich person in your congregation, you will just try to scam him or her. And, you know, wealthy people are smart. They, they know when they're being trying to be scammed and fleeced. Uh, so changing your language. Stop saying I will never be. I love what Jane said earlier. She's changing her language from I can't to how do I. Um, don't, you know, stop saying if uh, I'm rich or if I have the money to when I have it. Um, we talked about the affirmations. Uh, again, this is something Mercy was sharing with us that was, she was doing. Uh, I choose to do these things. This is who I am. So uh, think like a millionaire. Don't try to don't try to spend like a millionaire. Think like one. Act like one. Don't spend like one till you till you are in a position where you're in overflow. Anyone can get an amen. Right? A lot of people unfortunately try to act like a millionaire or a billionaire, and they haven't got the funds, and they get into a lot of trouble. They go and overspend. They start dressing, uh, spending money on on branding and on on brand names. Sorry, on brand labels on on uh, expensive cars or better houses or furniture or whatever and they can't afford to and they get into more debt now that's faking it that ain't faithing it uh, so think like a millionaire billionaire uh, talk like one don't uh, spend like one <laughs> amen uh, we talked about become and remain a student of wealth creation. I love the fact that you guys turn have tuned in and continue to tune in because as you tune in you're going to see change take place. We're going to hear more and more testimonies of this. Who you hang around with, the fourth way, who you hang around with is who you become. Fourth principle to wealth creation. So as I said, if you uh, fly with the eagles, don't, don't cluck with the chickens. All right? Fly high. Fly high. And hunt with the lions. Find your tribe. Multiply the kingdom culture. Got to love that. Uh, fifth one, people don't like this, but man, we've got to we've got to work on this. This is so important. Trim the fat. Wealthy-minded people trim, reduce, and cut their expenses first. So that's why we've got two parts of this series on uh, on this part on how to make money, make money. Next week, we're going to give you some more practical stuff. But before we can do that, if you want to be wealthy, you've got to do this first. So make sure that you have started. If you haven't started. Your 30 days on uh, auditing yourself on everything you spend. Who has started this? Put a put a one if you've started this, um, and put a two if you're gonna start this, and put a three if you've been naughty and decided not to start it. <laughs> one if you've started this already. Good, awesome, Rubika, Pastor Rubika. Well done, well done, Mary. Well done, Samuel. For gonna, I, I like it when you when people say they're gonna start something, they're making a decision. That's great. And next part, second part of trimming the fat is budget. And we talked about a simple rule of 50% to your needs, 20% to savings, and 30% to wants. That is a simple way to set up uh, a budget. Talked about paying yourself first. And then we said tackle your debts. Tackle your debts. It's important. Uh, then we talked about the sixth way to increase wealth and sustenance was creating business and creating an income through business. And we talked about how you can create business with little or no capital. Last week, we heard from amazing stories from around the world, from people like Stella and, and Lamek in Kenya, Holiness in Uganda, Jane in New Zealand, uh, Pastor Rubika in Australia, Jiggy James in Sri Lanka. And if you missed that, go listen to the, the, the teaching and the testimonials. It can be done. And all of them started with uh, zero capital. Okay. There's the book that uh, I've written as well on this. If you're interested in a copy again just whatsapp me directly or if you put it in here uh hopefully we can uh, uh can we'll keep an eye on it and get to you guys as well on letting you know more information I talked about how you can find a business idea which is the first step and what you can do to do that look at what's in your hand and then we talked about this which you know pops matthew's really excited about for his business is taking your business from good to great the kingdom great, you know, how to start branding your business and getting it to influence in a bigger scale and scaling it up and making it something that will impact many more people. All right. So I love that. 
And today we talked about can you make money, make money while you're sleeping and uh, reminding you that passive income frees your time and money and gives you resources to live out your kingdom life like the Good Samaritan, okay? Remember the, uh, the idea of moving into overflow. And if you're still at broke, that's all right. You're, you're knowing where you're heading. And the, quicker, the, the more you know where you're heading, the quicker and the better you can get there. And the faster you can get there, let me say. So let me finish with this. And then I'm going to open up this, uh, the questions. And then we're going to open up our, our breakout rooms. Jo 3 John verse 2. 3 John chapter 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. That's my prayer for you. That's Pop's prayer for you. That's our prayer for you as leadership. Beloved, we wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Now, I want you to know that your soul is made up of your mind and emotions. So to the level of your mind and emotions contributing and agreeing with this is to the level that you will prosper to the level that your mind is no longer a barrier is to the level that you can prosper and that's why we do these teachings and we ask you questions and we push these questions out to you so here are some questions guys nine questions i want you to answer it here and then we're going to discussion in uh, more into the discussion in the breakout rooms question one what have you gained from today Give you a minute to answer. What have you gained from today? Just pop it into the group. Uh, write, write an answer down in the chat group right now. What did you gain from today? What's one thing you've learned that stuck out at you? An aha moment, as we would call it. Awesome. Thinking through spending. Wonderful. Anyone else? What have you gained from today? What is something the Lord has spoken to you about from today? Perry, 3, John, or Stephen, I wish that above all else you would prosper. Yeah, amen. <laughs> it's 3, John, chapter 2. It's a letter. It's not John, chapter 3. It's the letters. 1, John, 2, John, 3, John, which is after, uh, before Revelation. Ken, purpose, identity, and dream bridge. I, I can't find it. I mean, three John. I on, I'm only seeing one one. What well, is something wrong with my Bible? Or Mark, Luke, John. Then you have Acts. Then you have uh, Ephesians, Romans, Corinthians. You have Thessalonians. You have all of those. And as you get to the end, I'm there. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm there. One John, uh, two John, and three John. So go to three John, the book, third book of John, chapter two. It's right here, sir, and I'm there. I assure you I'm there. I can see. Someone give him a hand. <laughs> the idea of dreaming, Rubika, awesome. Zippy, uh, living purpose. Wonderful. Uh, Coach Ron will be more specific with budgets. Ooh, beautiful. Um, to sit and think about all you said, trying to grasp the truth for myself. Wonderful. I love that. Um, Even is 3 John verse 2, not, not chapter 2. Oh, sorry. Three John chapter one verse two because John three John only has one That's chapter. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, if you read the next verse, you'd have found it, bro. <laughs> 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 never don't spend like one. <laughs> I'm like I can't see it. <laughs> oh, there! I had to throw a curveball in there. Uh, the five cues, the five questions. Dash. Awesome. Question number two, guys. Have you begun? Oops. Uh, let's try that again. Getting too excited here. Question number two. Have you begun your 30 day audit on your expenses on trimming the fat? And if so, how is it going? And I kind of answered that question before. So, uh, yes, no, uh, uh, yes or no, basically. And it's all right. It's not a condemnation. It's just an uh, availability to say, hey, I'm willing to make, a, I, I want to do something in my life, or it's not that important. Um, or no, I didn't do it, but I want to do it. So, yes or no. You know, have you begun your 30 day audit on your expenses on trimming the fat? And if so, how is it going? And if it's not, if you haven't done it, then the question is, how can we help you to get it done? What's the barriers? Okay. So I've got a couple of yeses. Uh, and, I, and, I, and again, no condemnation for those who haven't done it. Halfway through, well done, Pastor Rubika. Question three. Well done, Sandy. Have you got a budget set up and started paying yourself first? 
and I use saving. So again, yes, no, I don't know, IDK. Um, and again, no condemnation, guys. We're just wanting to get you to a place where if you can build these foundations, wealth is just around the corner. Awesome. Well done. Paying myself first. Love it. Tash, yes, mercy, yes. Question four. I'm applying all learning here, not just to wealth, but everything. Brilliant. Have you changed your language around wealth creation? Have you changed your life? Share me three, unable to. So again, a good opportunity to discuss in your in your uh, breakout rooms what the barriers might be and how your facilitator can help. Uh, have you changed your language around wealth creation? Changing, yes, I have. I'm changing in the process, starting to do affirmations, that sort of thing. Question five, do you think you can start a business without capital and go to sustain your family and your kingdom purpose? Do you think you can do that? For those who haven't already, do you think you can? And you had some awesome testimonies from some of the guys who've just recently started, like Stella and Lamek, um, which were brilliant and exciting. Question six, can you take your existing business to a higher level of influence and branding? Can you take your existing business to a higher level of influence and branding? And this may not be applicable to everyone, but it'll be applicable to someone. Question seven, are you investing to live off passive income? Are you investing to live off passive income? Tash, awesome, number six. Yes, yes, good job, good job. Not yet, yeah, we're getting there, no. Yes, I can, beautiful. Number eight, two more questions. What strategies are, are you using in terms of question seven? Are you investing to live off passive income? What strategies are you using? Um, pop a few of your strategies in here. For me, it's Forex investing. It's property investing. It's royalties from books. It's uh, coaching programs. What about others? Um, the stocks. Beautiful. You guys, come on, start putting some stuff in. Why don't you start thinking? Properties, TFX size, Sam attached. That's awesome. Apartment, well done. Stocks, good. Beautiful. TFXI, Sandy, which is the Forex investments. And some of you guys will give you that opportunity next week to know more about the Forex investment because it's something that anyone can start. You don't have to have a lot of skill and knowledge. Last question. Are you free with your time and money to live out your kingdom purpose like the Good Samaritan? Are you free? And and that's an important thing, not just free because, uh, oh, yes, uh, I'm free, but I, I need money. Are you free with your time and money to live out your king? And I want you to be honest about this. And if you're not yet, just say not yet. Love it. You know, because when we're confronting situations, we need to know our limitations and our blocks and then be able to, that helps us to work through to the next stage. Awesome. Love, love uh, our transparency here. So, guys, we're going to do breakout rooms. And uh, for the next uh, 40 minutes, 30, 40 minutes, have a conversation around the breakout rooms. Um, possibly, uh, Ken, we can do five breakout rooms if you haven't already started doing this. Sorry, four breakout rooms, I was going to say. There's about 25 of us, so five in each breakout room. Um, so maybe my breakout room... I could just jump in with you and uh, Keno with you and